in this video, we're going to review the Vietnam War, which was a very controversial war throughout the 50s, 60s, and 70s, lasted a long time. The war was fought between two main sides. We have North Vietnam and we have South Vietnam. Um, the United States supported the South. And this war at its heart was about communism. It was about what kind of government Vietnam was going to become. Um, communism is a very different form of government than we use here in the United States. It is a form of government where there is no private property. Um, the government, I'm just gonna kind of jot this out here. The government is mostly in, is in control of, um, of property, of resources, of wealth, and uh, that looks very differently than what we do here in the United States. And, and that's kind of the core of what the argument is uh, and what this war is really all about. So the Vietnam War is all about power. It's about who is going to control the country of Vietnam. We have two sides. Um, at this point of history, Vietnam is two countries, North and South Vietnam. Um, and the North wanted to combine or to unify um, Vietnam under one communist country. And South Vietnam wanted something very similar. They also wanted to unify, but they wanted to be in charge, right? They wanted to have the power and they wanted to make Vietnam a democratic country. So this is all about, this is all about government and power. Who has the power to form and control the government of Vietnam? So that brings us to a really important point, which is why are we studying the Vietnam War in United States history? Why would the United States even get involved in Vietnam halfway around the world? Why do we care? Well, we care because of this vocab word that I'm going to highlight and draw attention to, uh, and that is domino theory. It is kind of the big vocab word of the Vietnam War. We cared about what government Vietnam had because we were really worried that if countries like Vietnam became communist, it would spread. It would, like dominoes, knock over um, other countries, other neighboring countries. And all of a sudden, we don't just have Vietnam to worry about. But we have Vietnam and Cambodia and Laos and Korea and China. And, and we're, we are fighting a losing battle. And this political cartoon, I'm going to change my color here so you guys can see a little bit better. Um, this cartoon well represents domino theory, right? We've got um, Uncle Sam here, abbreviated as the US. He is trying really hard to stop the dominoes from falling, right? We can see there's South Vietnam. Oh, he has his back up against North Vietnam, North Korea, China. Looks like that says Eastern Europe. And he's trying to hold back these dominoes so that they don't fall, which is the direction, you know, the dominoes are going in the image, uh, and don't knock down these countries. I was just mentioning Cambodia, Laos, and, uh, you know, the rest of the world here. And so this visual symbolizes the why. Why do we care? Why do we get involved? Because we don't want all these countries becoming communist. So the U.S. joins the war and supports South Vietnam the democratic side of uh, this conflict. And we go to war after kind of an odd situation where we, we think or we say that our ships are attacked uh, by the North Vietnamese in an area of um, Southeast Asia called the Gulf of Tonkin. That's a, a body of water. Um, so basically I'm gonna draw this really terribly here, but let's just pretend this is Vietnam. It's so beautiful. Um, and then this is some, this is some water nearby. And um, that is the area where our ships are, uh, which is, of course, you know, if this is the north and this is the south, that's, that's pretty close to North Vietnam. And um, as we kind of look back now that it's, it's been some time, um, it's, it's actually pretty clear that that never happened. Um, there's really no evidence that we were ever attacked at all. And so uh, the, the core reason of why the U.S. goes to war is, uh, I'm going to say a little iffy at best. Now, as we're fighting this war, we find that it is incredibly difficult. We are used to, we're used to winning, right? We're in the U.S., we're used to winning wars and um, we kind of forget that, you know, that's not, that's not guaranteed. And there's a couple of reasons why this was so difficult. 
um, but the uh, vocabulary word you might remember, Viet Cong, refers to basically a group in the South, uh, which is the Democratic side, but they support the North. They are, uh, they are communists. So I'm going to write that out here. I need a better pen. <laughs> but the Viet Cong are communist groups in the South that are, are kind of sabotaging everything we're doing. They're, they're working for the North. We are also finding this very difficult because of what's called guerrilla warfare, um, which basically means what, and this is what the, the, the Viet Cong and what the North Vietnamese were doing, they were hitting us with really surprise attacks. They were using the jungle, which they knew so well because this is their country, uh, to, to, to hide, to move without um, the U.S. And, and South Vietnam necessarily seeing. And so kind of the idea was at any time we could be hit and have no idea really where things were coming from. I'll talk more about this on the next page, but media and public opinion made a huge impact on the war. It made um, it made fighting a lot harder because the U.S. was not supporting. Um, as time went on, we started really questioning what we were doing and why we were, why we were even there. During the Vietnam War, we saw a lot of anti-war protests here at home, here in the U.S. Um, and the people leading those protests were, were young people. They were college students. They were teenagers. And that makes sense because during this time period, the way we decided who was going to serve and who was not was through a system called the, the draft, the military draft. Um, so I'm going to just kind of write out here the draft um, selected. Oh, wow. So hard to see. Selected uh, military. Um, basically, this was based on your birthday and you would get a number. And if they called your number, you were you're going to Vietnam, whether you wanted to or not. Um, this applied to, to males only um, without health conditions. So, of course, they're leading the protests because these are the guys getting chosen, right? College students, young people, these are the people who are being sent to die. And um, these protests sometimes even got violent. And um, Kent State is an example of a protest where uh, the police, the National Guard in Ohio, um, broke up this protest and they started firing, they started shooting. Um, and they killed four people. They killed four kids. Um, so this is a very emotional uh, time period. Vietnam, as I kind of hinted on the on the first slide here, um, is the first war to be televised. And uh, that's important because if we see something, this is going to be my attempt at drawing an eye. Ha -ha, don't tell Mr. Griggs. Um, if we see something, it's harder for us to ignore it. And so we could see what was really happening and um, we could see that we weren't winning and that people were dying and they were dying for, for what reason, right? To, to keep South Vietnam democratic, didn't really feel for many people um, that, that was worthy of, uh, of, of lives. There, there's also proof that we were, we being the military committing war crimes um, we did things that we're not we're not proud of. Um, Agent Orange, napalm. These are these are chemical weapons um, that were dropped on um, not just the environment. Uh, Agent Orange was dropped to uh, basically deforest uh, Vietnam because it was such a dense jungle. It, it, the military realized, hey, if we can if we can destroy the forest, we can see, and if we can see, we might be able to win. So we dropped that on on the vegetation, on the, on the trees. And the napalm is a chemical weapon that um, is used against people. The My Lai Massacre is another vocab word you might remember um, if you're here in class, <laughs> where military basically fired on, on civilians. Uh, we killed women, children, um, non-military non men, um, and, and we did it basically for, uh, for no reason. And so, we're seeing from the protests to the television to what the military was doing, this anti-war movement is growing and growing quickly. All right, let's wrap this up uh, by looking at some effects. And uh, I know this has been kind of a long video, but the Vietnam War lasts quite a long time. There's lots to dig into here.
Um, so I'm just going to summarize with four points. Big effects, big consequences of the Vietnam War. Well, the first off, we have to you know, start with, uh, we lose this war. This is not a victory for the uh, United States or, or South Vietnam. North Vietnam wins this thing. You might see uh, the Tet Offensive as a vocab word um, that kind of connects to the why we lose this. This is sort of the turning point, I would say. The Tet Offensive is uh, where North Vietnam uh, basically pushes into South Vietnam and, and hits a lot of cities, firebombs, lots of places, and, um, and shows that they're, they're able to um, attack and, and hold that area. And so that's kind of the point where we, we realize we are not winning. Politically, Vietnam also ruins LBJ, Lyndon Baines Johnson, his presidency. This is, this is the deal breaker. Um, for all the reasons listed already, Vietnam becomes super unpopular and Johnson realizes he has no hope of uh, being, ele being reelected. So he steps aside. We also see a major loss of trust um, in our government because they, they lied, right? They lied about how the war was going. They lied about the start of the war and why we got into it. Um, and so we're, we're going to see a period of time in the 70s where you know, we're not really believing what's coming out of our politicians' mouths. It's pretty similar to what's going on today, right? We, we don't have a lot of trust um, in those people. And finally, here's something positive to end on, the 26th Amendment. Um, very important amendment. It's, what, it's the, the reason 18-year-olds can vote today. It lowered the voting age from 21 to 18. Um, and this is really important because people who were being drafted to go fight in the Vietnam War um, were 18 years old, 19 years old, whatever. And, and during this time, they couldn't even vote for the politicians um, sending them there. So you have uh, these young people um, during Vietnam to thank for your, your voting rights at 18 years old.